Hello to everyone. Good afternoon, and as it's afternoon here. It's uh, nice to be here on screen uh, for our webinar. <clears throat> and we are here three of us. Tuli, who is our uh, international relations specialist. Uh, Elvira, who is student, and me, the, the program director. And we will introduce uh, Semiotics uh, MA program in the University of Tartu. And I think I'll we'll share the slides. Yes. As we have prepared some slides, also to accompany us. Yes. So, semantics MA program in Tartu, and what we will, were planning to do is to first introduce short semantics in Tartu and the curriculum itself, talk about what's happening here in terms of research as well as other activities like events, that's one, and also to let the leader to tell something about reality from the student perspective. Uh, <clears throat> so about semiotics, I guess if you have ended up here, you already know something about semiotics. But uh, very short and to introduce uh, the way how we see it from here is that, yes, semiotics is the study of meaning generation processes. Well, most of all, communication and interpretation. Uh, and uh, the speciality of that is that uh, we are here strongly combining uh, three perspectives, semantics of culture, social semantics, and bio, bio or eco semantics, meaning that uh, culture, society, and nature are all connected, and in each of them are meaning-making uh, processes, and they're based on this. Mm, and, uh, well, from my more social semantic perspective, I would, would of course say that uh, social semantics, meaning uh, most of all communication and interaction, are central to this field. And based on this, there is this world of culture, the <clears throat> intercultural relations, textual fields, realities, and so on. And uh, as a basis of it, there is our cognition as well as interspecies communication. And in most of those complex, these complex issues like environmental crises or societal problems or cultural creation, there is uh, usually all of them present, uh, whether they are in the focus, that's another question, but that's what we do, that we see them all connected. And of course, also, we have specialization of, of, in different branches there. And that can be considered one of the specialities of uh, semantics in content wise. But uh, the <laughs> department uh, of work in that is um, can be considered also key centers of semantics in the academic world. Uh, and with also its roots, uh, which you can most of all mention two names, Yuri Lottman and Jakob von Ixkil. Yuri Lottman has established the department and the school. The school can date back to 60 years and the department and study program is actually more or less 30 years old. And Nick Skill, while Lottman is the establisher of the cultural semantics and Nick Skill is most known through his concept of Fumwalt, which is the basis for biosemantics. It's and a small fact sheet about the department <clears throat> that we have around uh, 20 academic uh, faculty members, in addition, students, including doctoral students. As we have uh, four study programs the uh, BA or undergraduate, two master programs, one in Estonian and the other one in English, and then also doctoral studies, meaning that. The semantic studies can start right from the very beginning till the 
doctoral degree. And also we have a really good and uh, nice library. A picture of one room is visible there, which is uh, uh, presenting the Thomas Sever Memorial Collection, which is also situated here. And as I told, there are the main branches of uh, studies, semantics of culture, social semantics, and biosemantics, to which our academic uh, members and their activities mostly fall in or in between and in interactions of them. And then about program itself, uh, the study program then consists of different parts. Uh, first, there is uh, basic courses, meaning the introduction or the historical and conceptual introduction to semiotics in this uh, history of semiotics. And then uh, introduction of uh, Tartu traditions, uh, Lotman and Uxkull and other, other backgrounds, so to say. <clears throat> uh, moving to methodology, that's the basic of how to do semiotics, how to do analysis and uh, form theories models, as well as master seminar, which uh, which supports your studies and research throughout all two years. And besides those general things, there are specialized courses from which you can take all, as well as have some flexibility in choosing them, so you can also choose to specialize more into one or other, but you will certainly get something from each part of it. So it covers uh, culture, media, translation, uh, ecosemiotics, biosemiotics, environmental issues, as well as uh, interspecies communication, topics in politics and uh, semiotics of power, as well as subcultures and so on. In addition to these, we have elective courses, which are uh, changing every year. Some are more stable, some are more uh, pop-up courses. Or if we have some uh, visitors, uh, visiting professors, for example, or also doctoral students make courses on their specialties, or some uh, our own professors have courses on their uh, topics of their most deep interest as Peter Dorop recently had a course on Dostoevsky semiotics, for example. Uh, and besides those uh, courses you can elect, there are also optional courses, meaning that you can take anything, or so, not so big amount, but still mm. anything from the university, uh, as well as uh, you'll have a small course introducing Estonian language and culture, and of course, one of the most important parts, the master thesis itself, uh, for which uh, there is the option that you can actually choose your own uh, topic of research. It's not prescribed for you, but you can choose it and uh, develop it uh, together with uh, the supervisor you will choose. And it can yes, study your own field of interest with the support of semiotic expertise from the department. Uh, and here is a small also fact sheet that it lasts, gives the degree of Master of Arts in Humanities. Uh, and it lasts for two years, for which uh, three semesters are more for courses uh, and one semester for writing. But uh, yes, during your studies, you can make this, um, take uh, elective courses and make other choices so you can also design it in some other way, have more courses in the final semester. As well as, of course, we have the study mobility option, and so you can still design your own uh, track in studies. And altogether, it's counted as it's 120 ECTS, <clears throat> which is maybe a yeah, formal number just. And it's mostly happening in that too. But as I said, you can also take study mobility and sometimes that is also events taking outside of the town.
Then uh, sometimes, for some reason, people also ask what will happen to them after they graduate, besides the big party. Uh, for which uh, you have to remember that it's, of course, the an academic uh, degree, I meaning you are not going to get the specific uh, vocation after, but uh, rather some skills uh, so that you can uh, think about your interest and how you can actually do something with in your field of interest with semiotics using uh, knowledge of signification, interpretation, communication, interaction, translation, uh, modeling, uh, and knowledge of the connections of different systems from nature, society, to culture, and so on, uh, and how to make something great out of it, for example, on the fields of communication, media, creative industry, or cultural management, consulting, uh, and so on, and so on, including, of course, follow continuing your career in research. Or what do you think of very possible? Yeah, maybe I can uh, mention some um, uh, mention something from my side because I regularly get the question of uh, what will you do after this degree? And um, I think um, we also talked before that it's it's a very nice introduction into like academic um, overall profession that it's a job and it's it can it's it's available and it's uh, possible and i think semiotics yeah, gives the tools of um, like zooming out so you can see that in the career prospects that the jobs are mostly like um pattern seeking and um problem solving in a way um and i think it's uh, although it's very it, it could be seen as very academic at the same time because there's these three uh, streams uh, in this degree. So like both, uh, not both, but like this bio, social and cultural, it really helps to see how semiotics can be applied um, to real situations. And um, yeah, but you, and you can also go general semiotics direction and be like very academic. So I think, uh, yeah, that's why I think the, career prospects are very open to what you want to do. And also what was mentioned before, the, cho the, the choice of topic, that you can choose whatever you want to do in your thesis, whatever kind of uh, um, context you want to write your thesis in. Um, that really, um, yeah, helps to, wow, I lost my trace of thought. Um, yeah, this kind of, uh, it shows how semiotics can help understand, to understand different topics. And so your course mates will also research many different things. And that's a very fruitful ground for your research also to change the position of where you are. Yeah, I, I guess that's that's the main thing about the career. Yeah, to be open, yeah. Thank you. And I will uh, now say some words about the uh, the research uh, in our department. So uh, not only do we teach semiotics, but uh, basically all of the teaching staff is involved in academic research and they are actively publishing research articles and also graduate students, PhD students, and also some MA students can be involved in this activity. And there are some uh, keywords uh, I wanted to mention, uh, some research areas that are uh, relevant at the moment for our uh, teaching staff, like transmedial narratives and culture, uh, also digital education platforms uh, seen as transmedia cultural texts, and uh, translation as a cultural mechanism. Uh, from the side of ecosemiotics, uh, questions about cultural and ecological aspects of species extinction, uh, umwelt analysis of endangered animals, like trying to actually look into the subjective worlds of these species that uh, we are losing due to environmental change, 
and uh, creating some kind of semantic model of what it is to be endangered um, from the perspective of the human society, how they see these endangered species and how, how uh, the world would look from the side of these animals or um, other um, life forms themselves. And from the side of social semantics, uh, the projects uh, dealing with analysis of strategic history narratives uh, and semiotics of power and politics in more general. And our department also publishes the Science System Studies, which is uh, uh, one of the most prestigious uh, peer-reviewed journals in the field of semiotics. Uh, and uh, in addition to this, there is the Dr. Semiotics Library, which is a book series also uh, publishing monographs uh, on the subject of semiotics. And in addition to this, uh, the graduate students of the department publish Sorto Semioticus, which uh, is an academic journal uh, led, uh, run by students and also it publishes uh, student research. So this is uh, kind of an exceptional occurrence that we have actually have a peer reviewed uh, academic journal for students uh, published by students. And this leads to the topic of maybe yeah, about yeah. Hortus. You can also, if you're interested in knowing a bit more, uh, they have a blog, so you can read it, uh, read things also there. Um, and it's nice. Yes. Uh, it's a nice introduction overall in what is happening here. So yeah. Yes, there is the on, uh, the journal itself is online, and mm -hmm. it has the four blog uh, con connected to it, uh, which publishes additional information not just research articles. Mm -hmm. So, and some more words about uh, MA research. As Steve mentioned, you can choose your own thesis topic. Uh, usually students choose it based on what they have studied before they came into semiotics, but they already have some knowledge in. And you can actually also choose to do a master's project uh, as some kind of uh, practical or artistic uh, project. Uh, in that case, you would need to take additional courses if you choose not to go the uh, academic uh, thesis uh, path. And uh, we very much support the student research and there is just the entire fourth semester is dedicated to individual work with the supervisor and uh, writing process. And uh, throughout your studies, you also have the MA seminar that is also designed to support this uh, writing process. And there are here some examples of uh, MA thesis already defended. Uh, so uh, you can see that there are quite uh, varied uh there are they are from the areas of uh, social semiotics uh, eco semiotics uh, semiotics of culture and they reflect the different interests uh, that the students have uh, already had when they applied into our program uh, and uh, overall our department has quite a vibrant international life on the level of uh, academic uh, conferences and seminars and uh, visiting lecturers, but uh, also we encourage our students to uh, organize the academic events or seminars or reading groups if they want to, and also cultural events if they have any ideas for some kind of artistic projects then we always try to find a way to support them and be also involved in that. Uh, so here is the email address, drsemiotics.ut.de, where you can always uh, contact us and ask any questions you have about the program. And we would very much like to have some questions from you. So until you are thinking, maybe I would ask Elvira. 
Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, um, uh, what would you say are the most like valuable or interesting things uh, that you have gained by studying the Antarctic? Mm. Um, yeah, maybe I can like also give the background a bit. Yeah. yeah. What is the? Um, I am from Latvia, and uh, my research is um, about surface arts. And I came here to because I thought that semiotics is a very um, is a very very good tool uh, how to analyze this kind of multimedia um, experience, which is also very very connected with like social and political events and cultural development. And um, so the most valuable uh, things that I think I've learned here is uh, really like how um, how diverse semiotics can be and um, that it's very nice. Uh, it's not a very fast process to understand it. Uh, in the beginning, it's a bit overwhelming, but uh, I would say that it's nice to try and uh, it's it's worth it because, um, uh, yeah, meeting these people and kind of um, Tartu is a city which is very, very calm. Uh, and together with this kind of multifaceted uh, degree and these different approaches, you are also in an environment where you need to meet with yourself uh, and uh, in a way really question uh, and in, in not a hard way. It's very nice, it's like with the support from the department and, uh, and the environment. Um, yeah, you just slowly understand what you want to do. Uh, and uh, how to deal with your subject. And um, yeah, I think that is. And when I came, I actually did not know about these three uh, different directions. So when I came and I found out that there's biosemiotics uh, coming from like a humanities background, it was uh, um, scary uh, a bit. But then I understood that it's actually, it fits very, very well. Okay. It just makes sense that uh, the social aspects and the cultural and the biological, they kind of mirror each other. And uh, there's these connections that, um, um, yeah, really help to understand it. And I think uh, a very nice thing that I appreciate in this department is the freedom of, um, like you are, um, you can write about even the essays and all the subjects, they are very open. So you can choose what topic you want to do. Uh, so you can apply semiotics to your interests and it's not that much about uh, doing the, the check-ins and just finishing some courses, but you can really like personally gain from things. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Well, you can ask more questions. You can ask also <laughs> like uh, challenging questions or uh, something like that. In the chat, and the chat is closed. Okay, <laughs> oh. and what about uh, practical life here? Yeah, what's the most uh, unpleasant mm -hmm. thing? Yeah, okay, um, unpleasant, unpleasant. Uh, well, um, yeah, in our course, uh, we are like we are sixteen people, and uh, there's two Ukrainian girls, and then three people are from Europe. So everybody else is from environment which is completely different. So you need to uh, be prepared to the weather being different, uh, the winters being cold, uh, the summers being very warm, but at the same time not tropical. So. Um, uh, and yeah, it's, uh, I guess all of us are, the main thing that we are criticizing about that too is food, but the, the longer we live here, the longer we understand, like the more we understand that uh, it's a bit harder to find it, but it's there. So um, yeah, and it's very nice to also share these practical things with, uh, it creates this kind of community feeling. We just have to ask from there. Yeah, years. you just need to you just need to organize the thing and uh, and just uh, be open for a meeting, and uh, yeah. So the I guess I guess the cold is the main problem that all the other people also experience. But uh, if you have the right clothes, and I think every local is just very happy to consult about these things. So uh, <laughs> to to say and. Um, but uh, it's also interesting to see that uh, 
for the first year, I tried to convince people that mittens are a good idea. Yeah. And only in the second year they understood it. So, <laughs> so it made it gives you have time. Yeah. It may take some time to adapt. Yeah. There was a question. Uh -huh. uh, uh, so this is uh, a semantics MA program that you can apply now. This is entirely an international student's course. So your uh, uh, all your course mates are from different countries and you can form your international community. But you are also very welcome to mix with uh, Estonian uh, students in our department. So yes, uh, so the question, uh, the answer would be yes, there are, there are many international students to hang out with. The size of the group is more or less 15 students. Yeah. Each year 15, so it's the size of the group in the course and many in many classes uh, you're with your own course or then some other Erasmus students as well as uh, local students from other disciplines also. Yeah, the locals, there is two parallel. There is the Estonian program, which is different, and then the international one. Yes. Um, to be fair, it's not very easy to mix with them, but they're very nice. So when you get the chance, they're very, very nice. And uh, yeah, and if you feel uh, lonely as an international, Erasmus is organizing a lot, a lot of events in the city. So if you're open, then you won't be lonely here. I think. Yeah. Yes. But yeah, so you have also local students, then it's also possible to establish relations with uh, locals yeah. on the basis of your discipline. You don't have to find them or don't have to have too many ports to find them. You can just <laughs> take someone from the <laughs> corridor. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I hope that answers the question. Uh... I don't have any more. Uh, maybe we can also talk about uh, like the life during the exam session mm -hmm. when you when you actually have to get your results. How does that feel? Um, it's uh, of course the each semester you have the feeling of oh I should have began this earlier. Uh, but most of the subjects finish with essays. There are few which have tests, but it's not very popular thing. And there is a few that have um, the essay at the end, and then in the semester you have many tasks, uh, like presentations, group work. Uh, well, we have also um, courses which are uh, creative. Uh, in a way, we had uh, Umwelt analysis and uh, cultural representation. I, I might be saying the wrong name of it. That's okay. <laughs> but um, the the goal of it was to create. Um, a creative object at the end of the course based on umwelt analysis of a certain species. So um, you can have also these uh, courses. And uh, yeah, the essays are not uh, not that scary. It's just, uh, just trust yourself and I think everybody can do it. Um, and it depends on how much time. I think, yeah, the, the first semester for me was just to learn how much time I need to mm. do stuff. So. And um, yeah, so, and also the exam period is usually in uh, the whole January from Christmas until like February is the exam period and June is also the time of exams. And um, so you're free to do, plan your time accordingly. And usually the deadlines are planned together with the professors. So um, you can say that, okay, now we have too many deadlines in the same week, can we push it? And usually everybody is very open for it. Um, yeah, so that is. Okay. And about the thesis also, um, it's not only the last semester, we begin to think about it from the first semester of the studies. Uh, so it's nice to have at least the, to know what kind of topic you're interested in or what kind of field, because in our course, maybe for example, um, there's people who research uh, dance, uh, cinema, uh, TV shows, uh, there's general semiotics, biosemiotics, semiotics of sports. So we are like from very, very different uh, 
semiotics of language. So um, yeah, so it's very diverse. Um, and you just slowly develop your ideas. Yes. And calendar wise, maybe it's also good to know that it start the study year starts in the beginning of September, then the classes end in December before Christmas. And there is this exam period, which is uh, often students uh, go home for this time, but you can also stay here. Yeah, people who live quite far, like this second year, we have quite a lot of people who went for like two, three months. So you can also manage uh, long distance learning for the end of the semester or something like that. Yeah. And then the spring semester starts in February and the classes end in the end of May, but then there is also June is for exams, essays, and so on. And the final defense is also in the very end of May or first days of June. So we have some more questions. So is having a master's in marketing uh, helpful uh, for uh, studies here? So Deep, would you like to reply to that? Yes, of course. <laughs> well, like we are welcoming uh, people from many fields with any backgrounds. And the uh, suggestion would be to think about your field and uh, like it's good to know something about semiotics so to have an idea of where you are applying for and uh, why you want to study it. And then if you have a background in some other field, which you probably have, then to get a grasp of what is uh, how does it relate to semantics? Or if there is any, well, we have also had students who come from, from physics, where there is not much of semantics, but probably then uh, some other non-academic activities relate to this interest. So to see how does semantics relate to it, so you have also clear uh, explanation of your motivation. And in marketing, there is for sure, as uh, marketing is one of the application fields of uh, semanticians also. So it can be a quite full background. Yeah, we have also one girl who is writing her thesis about marketing um, and semiotics. And uh, I would say that there is not that, if the question is related with, uh, will there be many courses about semiotics and marketing? No, but uh, at the same time, um, the courses give like a bit deeper kind of understanding of, um, of the marketing semiotics in a way. Uh, and it, it makes complete sense um, to apply the knowledge that you get here to marketing uh, afterwards. Yeah. And like semiotic consulting and, and this kind of field. Yeah, yeah. marketing deals with well, how do you represent things? So this is uh, essential also for semiotics. So I think uh, it will be very helpful. Yes, and then every time the new course comes together in September, then it's like an explosion of different fields that <laughs> so come together and bring the uh, geographical differences as well as uh, field differences and so on. But we have one course, one lecture uh, in the spring semester, uh, which is applied semiotics. So it's not directly marketing, but it's like, uh, as I understood, like this kind of uh, product research. And, um, things like that. Well, and we have another question. So it's, uh, do you have any advice for the admission interview? What did you get in? <laughs> it's a very, uh, our course is very close knit and uh, we have very romantic uh, memories about this. We share like, oh, I remember who I saw in this interview. But uh, when you have the interview uh, advice, um, I think just um, trust yourself uh, because I, I think the department really kind of sees and feels if you are ready for it in a way. Um, and, um, yeah, it's nice to know what you want to write your thesis about. I guess you, we need to write it. We needed to write it in the motivation letter. Yeah. Like pre preliminary ideas for your thesis yeah. researches. But I think it's not like, uh, you know, written in stone. You can change yeah. it if you yeah. come because, uh, really 
the environment and everything will maybe show you some different uh, skills you have or interests you have. Um, yeah, so just uh, enjoy. Uh, people are quite nice. <laughs> um, it's not. It's it's maybe not very. Oh, another thing maybe about uh, the environment with the question about the environment. Uh, um, overall, Estonian people are uh, a bit, quite a bit calmer and like uh, quieter and introvert than Southern people. And you should just take it in advance. And it's not a, like it's a it's a thing to be prepared of and not to be scared of. So it might feel sometimes that you don't, what I've heard from um, my course mates that in the beginning, it's like you don't understand the body language or something. It's just trust. People are really, really nice. They're just more introverted. And that's in the interview. If you feel like they don't like you, it's not, it's not, it, it's not <laughs> like that. It's just the, it's just the local culture, which uh, warms up a bit uh, in a different tempo. That is just the way we are. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So it's just something to to be ready for and enjoy. And for the interview also, or before it, uh, as you need to write out some motivation letter, then this suggestion is uh, write your motivation letter yourself, because we will oh, talk yes. about it. Yeah, that's the, that's the uh, yeah, in the interview, they ask you questions about it. And uh, there was, for me, there were no questions about theory. So it's not like you need to read a handbook or something. You just need to. Well, you want to understand your background uh, and your interest uh, in semiotics. How does it develop? Where did you get it? And uh, how, how do you see semiotics and uh, also your motivation in the sense that explaining your interest, you can see how, how are you interested in semiotics, in studies, ready for studies. That's more or less it. Nice if you know something, can mention something about semantics and what's um, not just formally, but what's uh, like talking to you from it. But it's not like an um, exam of knowledge of the model. And it's also good to have a look at the curriculum courses, like the structure of the curriculum, so you have an idea what is what you are getting into. Because of course we like students who who are like prepared for the studies, so I think it's good idea to before the interview like uh, just look into our webpage and look at the courses and the curriculum and maybe you then also get a better idea what you are uh, looking for in semiotics. Yeah, and at the same time, uh, don't worry if you don't know. A lot about and in detail about semiotics because it's uh, still a very niche thing although it's uh, when you begin to study it you kind of go into the framework of everything is semiotics but um, there will be a lot of in the courses in the beginning you will have a lot of materials to find out what you need to know and what you need to learn so it's also yeah you don't need to fear that you are not you don't know enough. Yeah, you will learn everything here. So at the moment, we don't have any more questions. Um, I think another thing maybe about the living uh, living situation is um, Tartu is small uh, in a way, but it's uh, very well connected with bigger cities. So if you um, ever are thinking of like being in the middle of nowhere, Yes, but no. So you will be, but at the same time, you won't be. Um, it's very close to everything. So, yeah, I guess that's the, about the living things. Um, yeah. Oh, and about the degree, uh, <laughs> you can easily, uh, the department is um, the size and the communication is um, in a way, it, it's very possible to speak with the PhDs, for example, or with professors. Everybody is uh, quite easy to uh, 
meet and have conversations as peers and uh, um there is uh, the hierarchy is there but at the same time it's very it's quite easy to have um this kind of relationship and curiosity and share it with uh, people from all the department so i think that's nice that's something i've heard that in uh in other countries and other universities the hierarchy is um it's pretty strict but here it's pretty open i think it is also the tradition of your development himself because from the beginning he addressed also all the students as colleagues. Mm -hmm. So the Peter is... Torop is continuing this. That's yes. very surprising when yeah. you're in the first semester <laughs> and he calls you a colleague. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. And Valerie will have the habit of saying, dear friends. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So um, we don't seem to have any more questions. Maybe we can say some final words. For me, uh, I'm uh, very excited uh, to get your motivation letters, to get to know you, have the interviews, uh, and uh, meet you here in Tartu next autumn. It is uh, always a pleasure when the new students come with uh, new backgrounds and ideas of semiotics. So I'm very excited, and I, I hope to meet some of you. Yes. <clears throat> Yes, hope to meet you in September. Oh, I could add another thing. Uh, if you're interested, uh, there is a summer school, uh, and there is a spring school. No, a summer summer school definitely, which uh, you need to search for it a bit uh, in the homepage. I think. Right? Yes. Yeah. So if you're interested, maybe if you're still thinking of should I come for a full degree or not, you can definitely see that and check yes, out some conferences yeah. and stuff. So you can also, um, if you're not ready yet, so you can slowly explore the things that the department offers. At the end of July, there is a, a summer, summer, summer university course uh, that uh, offers like an overview of uh, semiotics done here. You're welcome to that as well. So I think if we don't have any more questions, no. Yeah, done. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you.